up guys when you are stuck in box one or any of the other four pentatonic boxes it can be really awkward and clumsy to shift from one to the other and shifting from one to the other is how you access all the voices on the guitar neck so here in this lesson i'm going to show you this cool little known idea concept that is going to help you to unlock the pentatonic boxes so that you can move freely between them and this is something i call the pentatonic elevator triangles now what we're going to do is we're going to use the awkward string pair. Now the way I talk about guitar, I always talk about string pairs. The E and A are a string pair, the D and the G are a string pair, and the B and the E are a string pair, and those are tuned in fourths. Now what we have is we have a subset of string pairs, which is the A and the D. That's tuned in a perfect fourth, but here's this little monkey here. This one here, the G and the B, this is tuned to a major third, and this can be why it sometimes feels awkward to play your scales and change through your scales so what we're going to actually do is we're going to make that a good thing we're going to leverage the fact that this two strings here are a little bit different and we're going to use these to create these pentatonic elevator triangles first things first i'm going to stay at the fifth position and i'm going to show you the three triangles i'm going to use now this is a remake of an old video and as a consequence people have told me about my triangles and told me the correct terminology i was calling them big triangle little triangle and right angle triangle but i have since been corrected and hopefully this will help you with your geometry as well so here the first triangle we're going to do is this one here this is is what I call a right-handed triangle and this is technically a scalene triangle but what I want you to notice is how two of the notes in the triangle so we've got this is one point on the triangle this is the other point on the triangle and if you notice this is on the same fret this one here Now that is the first triangle, but I call that the right-handed triangle. It is technically scaling because all the sides are a different length. So we'll call that the right-handed triangle. The next triangle we have to look at is the scaling triangle. This is a proper scaling triangle because none of these sides are equal. I'm going from five to eight on the B string and seven on the G string. If you want to practice these in just one position, that could be useful to do so also. So, scaling. Then what we have is the isosceles triangle, which is all even sided. Now, technically, it probably isn't if you measured it. But if you look at it visually on a chart, it looks like an isosceles triangle. So to recap, we've got the right-handed triangle. We've got the scalene triangle and we have the isosceles triangle. Excellent. Now you didn't know you were having a geometry lesson there. So here's where it gets interesting. We're going to look at pentatonic box one, which is this one here. So we've got that there. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to take the notes out of the box one pentatonic on the G and the B strings. If we just come down from this eighth fret on the B string, to the fifth fret you can see that i get that note there this is my scalene triangle this is where it lives it lives inside my pentatonic you may know it from these sort of lick shapes here you may know it from fast licks where you do a hammer on and a pull off and bend here at the seven so that position there that is the scaling pattern. Now the thing is, if we moved up into our next box pattern, which would be here at the eighth fret. And what we do is we isolate the notes that are on the B and the G string again here. You can see we get an isosceles triangle. So let's just join those two up together and we get this. Here's the scalene. And here's the isosceles.
So hopefully you're starting to see how I can move from one position to another already. But here's where it gets cool, guys, because the thing is, you've already got this. Scaling. We move up into the isosceles. Now what we're going to do is if we play the third box pattern. You'll see on the G and the B string, we get another scaling which is exactly the same shape as our original scalene triangle that we played down here. So let's join that up onto this. Right, okay, well what's next? It next is box four of your minor pentatonic, and this is in A minor by the way. So you can see here on the G and the B string, we get another isosceles triangle. So that is really cool because what we've got is we've got a scalene. And that pattern matches the pattern that was down here. So we've got scalene, isosceles, scalene, isosceles. Now we've got one more left, and guess which one that is, guys, because we haven't used it yet, and that is right angled triangle. And this goes into box five of that minor pentatonic. So you can see there, once you've got up to this right angled triangle here, And I slide up, I'm back into my box one position, and I'm on my scaling triangle again. I can even put that right angle triangle down here. Because remember, three, five, seven, nine, these are just octaves of three, five, seven, nine. So you can think of that as three, five, seven, nine. So if you learn it all down here, you've learnt it up here in the dusty end of the neck. So let's play that down here to the lowest position available to me. I could play the isosceles triangle here. Slide up into the position that gets me to the right angle triangle. And then move up into the scalene then into the isosceles again, scalene, and then into isosceles, up into the right angle triangle, then up into the scalene again, and then before I run out of frets you can see I can get another isosceles in there. So what's cool about that is it means you can use this as a device to bridge between licks. So say I had a lick up here in the box four pattern in my A minor and I wanted to do this unison bend lick. But I wanted to start down here because I want to create this effect of running up the neck. What I'll do is I'll play a lick down here. Now what I can do is I can use the pentatonic elevator triangles to move me up the neck. So here, I'll play this lick. That is the simplest way to look at this concept. Take a lick, take another lick, and connect them using that pentatonic elevator triangles idea there guys. Now hopefully guys you see how useful this pentatonic elevator triangles idea is. This is going to help you to connect those box patterns up the neck. But you know box patterns aren't the only way to see your pentatonic. If you're interested in a different way of seeing your pentatonic that frankly I think is a little bit easier then you might want to watch this video here. 
Hey up guys, if you'd like to support my work on YouTube, then please consider purchasing a copy of my book. The book is a compilation of PDFs from all the aha and light bulb moment lessons that you can find here on my YouTube channel, but all in one convenient place. It's available in three formats, a spiral bound copy, a paperback, but if you prefer an ebook for instant download, then you can grab that by clicking the link in this video or going to rickysguitar.com forward slash store to grab your copy.